Well, hey everybody, welcome back to uh, KWPR. That's Koi Water Plants and Rants. I'm Martin, and uh, if you're new to the channel, hit the little subscribe button down below. And give it a big thumbs up and uh, helps me out. Helps me to make more content for you lot. Um, keeps me going, makes me happy. <laughs> anyway, so, living with the drum. Yeah, um, a few more improvements going on um, which I'll talk about in a second so I'm getting a bit a few extra bits and pieces like the waste going out into the garden and also I'm trying to sort out something so I can purge my bottom drain after well you know about a story about um, why I couldn't sort of like put the uh, T piece in yeah but um, hopefully I've sold that uh, if I haven't I haven't uh, but we'll get around to that sort out something for it anyway but yeah um so yeah drum's been running fine absolutely brilliant um but um to be quite honest with you um i do think that the nexus uh performed better at removing fines um I know that sounds a bit strange to you but remember this is the entry level so it has only got the 120 micron screen um it works absolutely fine you know it's going it's taking all the big bits of muck out of the water and the water is uh um, absolutely crystal clear it's beautiful uh so but you know just sort of like looking at it to how the nexus was uh, to what it is now it's not not quite the same um and to be honest with you i think that if you know, I was at home all the time rather than sort of like working away all the week. So I could clean the Nexus out two, three, four times a week. Um, uh, I probably wouldn't have progressed onto a drum. I would have kept the Nexus. Uh, um, but there again, it gives me time back. So, you know, on this, uh, you know, on the Sundays now, uh, it gives me more time to do stuff like this. Uh, had this week off. Um, but I had the kitty wings down. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the grandchildren when they come down for their week's holiday with us uh, we've been out and about uh, tank museum uh, monkey world uh, weymouth beach uh, studland no not the naughty bit to all these people who know studland not the nudist bit but the uh, nice bit uh, shell bay um but yeah it's been a really good week um definitely 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 um, recommend the tank museum to anybody who's uh, into that absolutely brilliant but, you know, I was talking about rip off Britain. How much it costs to get into these places. It is absolutely flaming ridiculous. I mean, it is extortionate. And a mate of mine, he's just, uh, he's on his week's holiday down at um, Exeter in a caravan park. He's staying in one of these, you know, stack, uh, stack caravan things. Um, for a week it's costing him just under two thousand one thousand nine hundred something like that for a week self-catering ridiculous isn't it but anyway yeah rip off britain we gotta love it ain't we anyway so spin you around and uh, i'll show you what i've been doing so far so, got my black pipe this will be uh buried under a load of rocks and a mound of earth and that lot and uh it's going all the way along the wall there in me little garden in me shaded garden and uh, got the old grinder zoom in you see and I cut little slits like this all the way along now I haven't tried it yet pretty in it yeah I digress yeah I haven't uh, tried it yet see if it's working I'm just letting the uh, solvent well go off but it goes all the way down here, all the way down, and then just down in there. There's a little got the name cap on there. Uh, hopefully, it'll work and uh, make life a bit easier in the summer so I won't have to uh, worry about watering this area too much. So, I'm going to jump down in the pit in a minute and uh, see if there's enough water in the in the barrel to uh, trigger it and fire it off and see if it all comes up. So give it a try and I'll see you in a minute. Uh, yeah, got called away there. Uh, had to do a bit of shopping and that lot, so hence change clothes. 
for continue, continue, continuity, whatever that word is, continuity uh, sake. Uh, so yeah, down in the pit, uh, finish off what I was doing. So spin you around, show you what my big plan was. So what I have done is, so I've got me four inch inlet, uh, obviously ball valve there. And then on there, uh, that'll be for the uh, skimmer when I do it. Uh, I'll have a three inch pipe coming in all the way down the gun into there. So I've got that spare outlet uh, inlet there, which I've turned into an outlet. So I come along into uh, a ball valve, yeah, and round into my waist. So I need to put a little angle piece on there because at the moment it just sprays everywhere. Um, so what happens is, is uh, turn off this, uh, turn off the pumps and everything obviously, turn off this um, ball valve, open that ball valve, drain, drain out uh, the dirty side of the water into there, pump that out into the garden and then leaving that open, I then open that one again it pulls through and instead of filling up it continues to sort of like pull through at a flushing rate because it is quite a height to go up in there so it does pull so pull through going back out into there and that is my um that is my way of uh, getting around the problem i had of not being able to put a tea in for a purge uh, i have tried it it does work i will film it again uh, when I decide to uh, do it, uh, probably not next week, but probably the week after, so you'll get to see it in action. Uh, also, like I said, uh, I have done the sump pump, um, swap that round. I've hard piped it, I'll turn you around again. So, yeah, as you can see, I've put a hard pipe on there now coming up. Uh, it goes round and then out to where it was. That's uh, working better, better sump pump as well, I don't know what you can see in there. Uh, there's the old one, that's the old little one. Uh, got a better one in there. The only thing I'm worried about is the float. Um, so, just have to see how that goes over the next few days. But yeah, so, hard, hard wired in, uh, pushes out of there a lot better. Again, when it fills up and it goes off and I get a chance to show you. I will. So I'm gonna climb out of this pit now. We'll have a quick look at the fish and uh, we'll probably call it quits. I just need to tidy those cables up as well. Don't like messy cables. Um, but yeah, and then I'm going to go for a nice bottle of wobbly or uh, Warsteiner. Uh, any ex forces guys who served in Germany um, we know exactly what I mean, or any of you uh, people who've uh, been fortunate enough to uh, visit Germany and uh, taste the uh, local ales. Uh, but yeah, the old Warsteiner is uh, yeah cracking stuff, uh, hence the nickname Wobbly. But yeah, all right, catch you in a minute. So, quick look at the boys and girls. Uh, as you can see, yeah, three bodies doing fine. Um, just the one thing, I mean, the camera always makes the reds look more vibrant than what they are to the naked eye. I mean, they're not bad, but um, probably not as bright, uh, not as deep red as what they normally are. Um, there's two things I can think about, because I'm putting colour food in. Um, but it's probably the lack of sunshine is one. And um, the other thing is I've not been feeding any... Um, river shrimp this year is it river shrimp the little tiny sh shrimp yeah river shrimp uh, normally they get gallons and gallons and gallons of that stuff um, but this year I've not been feeding any uh, so um, that may be a reason to have it full of sticking out my bottom vein there can't work out what it is I think it's a leaf and it's just a stalk sticking out yeah, but yeah, um, 
that's the only thing I can think it may possibly is. Or late on the feed anyway, so the colour's been late going in. But everybody's hunky dory. Uh, really need to clear them out. I've got to get gummy, get get it the tancher show. I've got to get that in the gummy. Or gummy got to get the me to get it. Um and, uh, if anybody's noticed, I'm just going off. There is a new addition, uh, a nice Hyundai shower. Um, well, probably won't end up being too much Hyundai. Uh, you like to stay down. Um, because there's quite a lot of sumi, it's almost like, like Dalmatian sumi to come through on and it's underlying um, and in fact since he's been in my pond, I'll just wait for him to come back up again uh, since he's just been in my pond, um, it starts coming through uh, a lot thicker uh, this uh, came from one of uh, Gary Gatwick Coy's uh, auctions and uh, it was looked after because I can get up to collect it and uh, Gary wanted them gone. It was looked after by Stu at Surrey Coy for me. Uh, so he very kindly uh, fed it and heated it until I could get up to collect it. We kept on missing each other. I was free, he had something on. Um, or he was free and I had something on. So, yeah. So the sumi has uh, started to come out a lot more since it's been in my pond. Um, and I think it's uh, comes with a significant Uh I can't remember what the bloodline. I think it might be Super Monster. It was, wasn't it? Yeah. So yeah. So, but like I said, all the boys and girls are doing absolutely fine, but I do need to thin the herd. There's too many fish in here. And they're getting about 450 grams a day. But still looking for more. Uh, heat it to 24 until Friday, and then I drop it down to 22 for a, a week, and then it'll go back up to 24 again. Um, there's a method to my madness that I will explain at some point. Here's my ice car. Look at that. That is a stonking little fish. Absolutely stonking. And this platinum ogon that nobody wants is um growing like stink lengthwise. I think it's a proper shark. It really is a proper shark. And there's the other newbie. And the Nichi Kahaku. Uh, growing nicely, like I said, lacking a little bit hind where I really want to be, but that's only because of fitting the drum and not being able to go for long the food um, when the season started. But yeah, uh, need to again keep the colour food going in for him because it's starting to stretch the uh, the Benny a little bit. But, yeah, they'd be a nice little fish. Well, they'd be a nice big fish. That's what I'm thinking. The patterning on that would look better when he's a, a bigger fish. So, anyway, short and sweet. Well, it's probably not that short actually once I edit it, but anyway, back to work uh, after my holiday. Um, like I said, thoroughly recommend Tank Museum. Um, uh, I'm talking about Dorset area, so Tank Museum, uh, Monkey World, <laughs> yeah, definite, especially if you've got young kiddies. Um, and then Weymouth, uh, Weymouth Seafront, absolutely brilliant. Traditional old style seafront, 
uh, lots of nice eateries, donkey rides, helter skelters, all that sort of stuff. And uh, yeah, thoroughly recommend that. But anyway, I'm going to call it quits this week. Look after yourselves and uh, stay safe. And uh, remember, this ain't a hobby, it's a lifestyle, that's for sure. Stay safe. Bye. Right guys, I noticed earlier, it looks like she bashed herself. But it seems to be skin, it doesn't seem to be anything in the skin. Anybody seen anything like that before? Looks like she bashed her head. Um, but it's really noticeable, but got a bit of koi calm in there, that's why she said. I'm just going to put a bit of anti back on it, slip her back in, and chuck some verk on in the pond, I think, and keep an eye on it. Um, but anybody think I need a bigger bowl? <laughs> uh, so uh, she's over 65 now then so <laughs> yeah she's growing nicely a bit stressed out bless her yeah i'll get some anti back on there and have a look Um, gills are not good. Anyway, so, yeah, I'm in the lorry. Um, yeah, so I've uh, done a load of scrapes. Um, you saw the the, uh, the cow, as she was named, the uh, Tancho Shower. Had quite bad gills. Um, but I scraped, uh, found one gill fluke uh on uh on her um the gills were really uh, quite bad and the spots and everything like that now the spots are hard to describe uh they they're just like it's like white spot but larger spots i mean they're like zit size um so uh on her they were a little bit red and she had sort of loads of sort of like white mucus stuff around the side of her gills everything like that she put up a bit of a fight then but um yeah it's uh so got her out uh got about three of us out um that had marks on them as well had these white spots coming up not as bad as what she was by no means chad the chag had about four couple on his head and couple just behind his head uh, so I scraped him, I uh, found one body fluke on him, um, the little ISIS shower come out, uh, took out now, gills were fine, but the fins were sort of like a bit frayed and going, um, scraped him, so there's one fluke on him, so I'm not infested with flukes, I'm not finding hundreds of flukes, and it's not like I don't know how to do a scrape or anything like that, or where to scrape, so... And I don't, you know, I'm using my microscope, you know, I'm quite proficient. So, um, although I've got flukes, uh, it could be irritating them. It's not an infestation of flukes. Um, and like I said, the water test came back fine. Um, so there was nothing else on the slides. No chilodina, no uh, costia, no white spot, um, nothing. And... Um, so 
although it sort of like looks like bacterial everything in my um you know my fish keeping experience and everything in my mind from uh, saying, saying it's not bacterial it's not it although it, part of it looks like bacterial other things don't look bacterial so yeah um so the next scene is a little bit distressing but i'll pick you up after i've uh played that um and she's gone the cow has left us unfortunately i didn't think when i saw those gills i didn't think she was going to recover from that such a shame really is lovely fish but i'll get on top of it i will So, uh, yeah, um, so unfortunately, after I scraped the cow, put her back in, um, sort of like about an hour later, um, I lost her, um, gutted, uh, really, really gutted about that one, but more concerned I was about trying to find out what the hell was going on, um, so i done huge huge water change um 40 45 percent water change um and i put a bit of salt in took it up to didn't take it up massive um took it up to just under three percent 2.8 percent uh reason why is uh i wanted to put fmg in as well um and it said you can't use salt and FMG, but if your salt's under 0 0.3, 3%, you can, uh, as long as you're careful. So, um, yeah, I've done that. I FMG'd them, a bit of salt in there. And uh, a few days later, they were luckily and not lost anymore. Um, they, ha they weren't happy. Uh, they weren't their usual selves. Um, they were looking to eat, um, but um, it's like they didn't trust you. you. You know, you come up, you stand there, and you throw the food in, and it all comes swimming over, and then they just sort of stop and start swimming around underneath it, and then until you disappeared, and then they eat the food when she disappeared. So it's like they're blaming me for what happened. So a bit weird, um, but yeah, so yeah, the fish are a little bit better. Again, apologies for the uh, camera angle, like I said, this was uh, taken from sort of like a WhatsApp, um, so it's on whatsapp you sort of hold the phone up right for your sort of videos and that lot so this is like said just for taking from whatsapp that i'm sending out to people um didn't really think about filming this for you guys come around come on dad come around and you see the white spots are sort of like dispersing breaking up now Looking so bad. That's a good sign. Uh, Where's the nicest shower? There he is over there. Yeah, his seem to be breaking up as well, so. Yeah, that's SMG. Yeah, it's hard to say. They're not happy. Um, they're moping, obviously. But I'm sorry, do not. Do 
was flashing there, but that's probably the flukes. Well, if there is flukes. So I will. Hmm. Don't know. But yeah, Chad's looking better. There were red and redness on his side from right down. That's what it was. So, um, just showing you this uh, on my banister. There's a few spots around. Um, paint was bubbling, and it was quite it, yeah. The paint's sticky there because uh, I put my phone case down and just trying to clean it off. And it's almost like an acid or something like that that's made the um, paint bubble. And I'm just wondering if um, whatever the hell it is, that's what got into my pond. Interesting. Ain't got a clue what it is. So, like I said, on the banister there's spots and that on it just weren't there. There was sort of like a in an area sort of like a almost like in a straight line going towards the pond. There was little spots here and there. The plants um looked okay there, but about a day later um they started shriveling up and going and uh some you know died back in places um so up on my estate where i live um they have contract sort of like gardens because we've got green areas and that lot that needs mowing and i mean about twice a year i've seen them well on average about twice a year they have some old boy come along and he's got one of these uh, industrial strength uh, weed killer things. The one's on the back and the pumpy handle and that lot. And he goes along the main roads and where you've got walls like mine and little bits of, you know, weed and stuff growing out of those and out of the cracks uh, uh, in, you know, sort of like the curbs and things like that. Um, he sprays them. And I remember in the past, well, last year I think I saw him. Um, he sort of like stopped, and uh, he lit up a fag of all things. But he had his lance up in the air as he was lighting it, and it was still spraying. Um, he's quite nonchalant with it. Now this is in dust, so then they spray a fair old distance these lances. And I'm just wondering if he actually accidentally. When you came past our wall and that lot, because the moss all along the wall, for some reason, um, he sprays the moss as well. Um, and I thought moss and lichen was protected. Uh, I may be wrong. I don't know about that, but I always thought lichens and mosses, even if they're growing on you know walls and things like that, they were were protected. I don't think you were allowed to kill them. But yeah, I've seen him spray the walls and stuff like that. So. I'm going with possibly as an explanation that he's sprayed over the wall accidentally and it's got into the pond. And remember, this is industrial stinks. This is nasty crap. Um, and because it come on so fast, it was 36 hours from when I first noticed the first spots to, um, to uh, the cow dying. And I think sort of like by doing the big water change, um, that's probably helped out a bit of salt and even maybe the FMG have sort of like, you know, managed to, uh, I shouldn't imagine it had been big quantities, but it's obviously big enough quantities to sort of like go with. Because I can't find any other explanation because um, they're not quite back on top form. Um, I think, you know, but... Um, they're eating not so much the pellet food they sort of i don't know they seem a bit wary of that but if i go out there with a handful of mealworms or something like that they are smashing it it's like a flaming um eruption when i chuck the mealworms in they're all over it so i've got no gasping so you know hopefully the, any gill problems like chad had a little bit on the gills and that lot um they you know they're they're, they're almost there. I'll show you a clip in a minute. But uh, I'm just getting the salt out of the water now. And I may, I may um, just go with um, a three-day course of chloramine tea just to be on the safe side. 
and uh, I'll probably do it at a parasitic dose uh, so I can sort of like start to knock whatever flukes I got there out and uh, then I'll follow that up with a fluke treatment just to get the flukes out of the way and stop them sort of knocking and flashing themselves but it just goes to show you it really just goes to show you that well you know everything you can be doing everything right uh, your fish are doing fine you ain't had problems for ages and then click snap of your fingers there's a flaming you know it just hits you and it can be something just totally and utterly random that you have no control over it really can um so yeah but i need to um change because me drum i don't think is changing enough water uh, throughout the week i'm having to do partial water changes i was hoping that my drum where it cleans uh, regularly that it would be doing my weekly water change uh, i don't think it's doing enough so uh, i've got a uh, getting some adapters for my water timer and uh, put that back on so i can sort of change a bit of water i do sort of like an hour in the morning an hour at night um again uh well i used to do two hours in the morning two hours and i'll drop that down to an hour uh, and just change the water out a little bit of water out daily that way so i can do me weekly without having to do a major one but yeah so i'll show you the fish now and i'll catch up again in a minute sorry it's going to be a long one So, as you can see, um, yeah, no more losses. Uh, all the spots are disappearing uh, slowly, just leaving a little bit of scarring behind, uh, which will eventually go. But, yeah, in one thing I will say, though, you can see the bottom there of the pond. Um, the salt has totally stripped out the, um, the biofilm and any um, blanket weed and algae that was down there. Uh, it's, uh, taking that right back it's totally not that back you can see look um that's nothing on the but it looks like sand on the bottom of the yeah, pond right, right. but it's not that's just where it's, the salt has stripped it back um so yeah if you want to get a very rig of um, blanket weed salt your pond <laughs> it, it works but yeah so like i said i will do a chlorine tea once the salt's out i'm down to 0.12 so I should be okay to chloramine tea with that. Um, they say it's only certain uh, manufacturers that say you can't use salt and chloramine tea. Um, other brands say um, do not cross medicate except with salt. So who knows who's right or wrong? Um, just uh, protecting the backsides. So as you can see, Fingers crossed, um, it's gone as fast as it appeared. Um, like I said, I'll just get rid of the flukes um, and that's it. But apart from, you know, the um, spraying, I can't think of anything else that would have done that. I was, like I said, bacterial did go through my mind, but... I think I would have lost a lot more fish if it had been bacterial like that bad. Um, it's just a little bit again. I, like I said, I do think it's sort of like that um, industrial strength um, weed killer. I really do. Um, but it's one of those things that you will never ever know for sure what the hell it was. Um, I could have took a could have, if I thought about it, I could took a sample of the water straight away and got that sent off for analysis. But, you know, in the meantime, you've still got to try and save your fish and do everything you can to try and save your fish. So, like I said, again, fingers crossed, touch wood, uh, all's okay. Anyway, 
So sorry it's a long one. I'm going to leave it there, but everything is um, hunky-dory at the moment. So not to worry. Uh, yeah, I lost the one fish. Um, and I did like the cow. It did have a lot of character to the pond. But that's fish keeping, isn't it? I suppose at the end of the day. So, yeah. So I'm going to end it here. Um, and I hope uh, people didn't sort of find it too upsetting certain people uh, most of us are hardened seasoned fish keepers so we you know we've seen a few fish deaths in our time but yeah it's still not nice to see at any time anyway um also the uh, french trip video is uh just about done uh, uh i've redone it uh i went back down sorry not french italy um i've redone it uh so got an italy trip coming up very very shortly possibly even be this weekend this week after this one's come out so um yeah so me purge uh purging the bottom drain that works i will video that so you can see it working and um, showing you that me um to waste but watering the plants to waste is working uh I'm not going to do that in winter time i'm going to put a wide piece on there uh with a couple of valves so in winter, um, I can just have it going direct to the drain rather than sort of watering the garden. But hey, recycling. Um, I'm having a bit of heat wave coming as well, isn't we? So yeah, it's, uh, keep the garden nice and fresh. Okay, everybody, look after yourself. Stay safe. I've been Martin. This is KWPR. And remember, in a hobby, it's a lifestyle. <laughs> I just, oh dear. All right, stay safe. Bye.